Hello, I'm Michael Curry, the puppet designer for The Fox and The Nightingale. Um, it's a piece that we conceived several years ago with Robert Lepage, looking for a wonderful translation of The Nightingale uh, and what form we would use to bring this to opera. And one of the things in the text of the, the libretto that's quite extraordinary is that they're, they're talking about the kingdom is on the edge of the water. So that very simple sentence described to us this use of water. I was always interested in Vietnamese water puppetry, a technique that's a thousand years old and comes from Vietnam and is used in harvest festivals in Vietnam in rice paddies to present folkloric tales. The folk quality of this is very representative of Anderson's writing and his own interest in uh, paper cutouts and simple folk imagery. So it inspired this idea of going to Vietnam. Robert and I went to Vietnam um, and saw traditional water puppetry and felt it was a very strong basis to, to build upon. But we're also very interested in all Asian forms of puppetry and in fact all world puppetry. And so it's a wonderful hybrid we've created of all these disparate forms. Um, one of the most remarkable things about this, of course, is that we're using water on stage. Water has been done on stage, but I don't think anybody's ever done water in the orchestra pit, which is a perfect basin. It's very far downstage, so we're allowed to do these very intimate, for opera, these very intimate forms and scales of, of puppetry. And the other thing that I think is quite remarkable about the piece is that we are using opera singers as puppeteers. And we've intentionally designed puppets that are very intuitive and not so technical that they completely would supersede the learning process, that they would become like learning to play the violin and having, you know, a, a, and, and in five weeks being able to play a concert. So I've made things that are very intuitive, and we've largely followed uh, traditional techniques from uh, Japanese bunraku theater, Taiwanese hand puppets, uh, we have sh Turkish shadow puppets, we have Vietnamese water puppets, and it's a wonderful hybrid that feels very much like world theater. And I'll demonstrate uh, one of the sizes of puppets. This is the, uh, a Japanese court character who comes to deliver the mechanical nightingale as part of the story. And it's, this is what I have, in the last two days, been training the, the principal singers and the chorus members and, and how, to, how to create life in these puppets without losing your own life. One thing that's unique about the way we're presenting these is we're not in any way hiding the singers. We do have puppeteers in black. We have five of them that are working throughout the show and assisting some of the more technical invisible shadow characters, but the, the duality between the singer and its, component, its counterpart, the puppet, is a very important part of this. Today's audiences are very good at splitting their focus, as you will, with puppetry. People know that there's a man in the box. They know that there's a man above with strings. So I simply break down that wall and present it both uh, at the same time. And for me, it actually gives a, a wonderful subtext for the, for the singer, uh, this sort of classical extreme look of the puppet, some of the more sophisticated motions that it's, it's capable of, capable of uh, that the singer is not. So we are uh, very interested in, in this duality and also uh, what the, the sort of magnetism back and forth between the puppet and the, and the singer. The singer learns a great deal about their role through watching their puppetry. And the puppets, of course, and the puppeteering will follow the natural instincts of the singer. So if a singer has a proclivity to, to play a scene big, we will raise and play that scene big with the puppet as well. But they're very simple to operate in regards to how they're constructed. I'll show you the uh, under the cover scenes, but there's a main control handle for the head, and it's held in the right hand, and there's one finger trigger that lifts the head. And this is placed inside the torso, and so by turning my hand left and right, and then by lifting the head up and down, we can get quite an expressive uh, fully full motion head. And then the hand, uh, this is a very 400-year-old technique from Japan. It's a, it's a integral rod that goes right up through the forearm, so by just rocking the forearm, I can get a lot of movement. I have an upper arm that is nothing more than a string. See, and there's no arm there at all. It's all soft. That's partially what makes it so expressive. It is soft and um, almost uh, ethereal. 
uh, whereas the human body is solid. Uh, and then the other portion of this hand is this simple trigger here that opens and closes the hand. But using them in combination, you can get some really fantastic movements that are uh, very realistic, and yet there's a schematic quality that makes it intriguing. Yesterday, I was overhearing a, a conversation with the conductor and the puppet, the singers, saying, these are very strong. You are going to have to project uh, with them. Um, and it's quite, uh, without creating any sort of competition, it's a duality, but they both uh, sort of exploit each other in a really interesting way. And as I said, the viewer will find themselves taken with this scale and they'll psychologically invent their reasoning to fit this scale. But then when the singer sings, there's a wonderful jump in scale that may sound like that shock would be a, a disadvantage, but it's a wonderful excitement in theater to, to have this live experience of, of having a, a, a really wonderful optical illusion take place. It's very much like magic. Um, or what we often describe as an out-of-body experience. And, the, I've had many singers, dancers, and actors who I prefer to use. I generally don't use puppeteers. I use actors, uh, dancers. There's a wonderful, since I'm going to expose the human body, I want it to be a very important statement. So training in dance, uh, musical theater, uh, opera singing, acting is always very good. We find that puppeteers are really good here with the hands, but um, often not very good to look at. So we, uh, this is why I'm very excited to, to work these with the men and women who are the, who are the singers. Uh, and we're already, already having really good success with their ability to, uh, to enjoy the process without being completely stymied by the techniques. Um, I've urged them to have fun backstage, and so they're slapping each other on the back and telling dirty jokes, and uh, it's quite fun. And this is the way you get inside of these techniques. Um, there's another handle, and this is what the ninja puppeteers will be doing. They'll be sometimes swimming underwater to, uh, to emerge, to, to do a technique that involves the other hand. So, and at times, they will take over the position of the singer while the singer does other positioning. So it's a really wonderful interplay between the set, which is the water and all the environment, the puppeteers who are the sort of basis, they're the shadows that exist in this space that you accept all the time, and then the singers who make grand entrances in, in uh, beautiful boats, uh, Japanese and Chinese styled boats, and there's a, a beautiful dock, all of it done in scale to these puppets. There's a unique, thing, a unique thing we've done in the show as well, is we have three different scales between Act 1, 2, and 3. Act 1 involves uh, miniature scenes of domestic scenes. There's a water buffalo and a farmer, little ducks, there's a frog, there's a, a lot of uh, wildlife to establish the, 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 the environment. And then this, uh, this size puppet comes out, um, and then there, the chorus behind has an even smaller puppet, uh, this high. 22 inches high. This is 32 inches high. And we're growing between scene one, scene two, and finally scene three. No puppets. Humans are playing the part as their full-size selves. And in fact, we get into one element, uh, which I won't disclose because it's a super surprise, uh, that is a giant mega scale puppet, which, is, uh, which really sort of caps this progression of scale up. So um, throughout, the, uh, throughout the sessions, we will get better and better at our puppetry, but already I'm seeing some of the singers who are ready to go into final rehearsal. They really own these things in one day. So we're very pleased uh, with the cooperation of the cast that has been uh, chosen, as well as the staff at the opera have, been, have really accepted these with open arms, and uh, I couldn't be happier. Isn't that right? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much.